Hi, it's Better Photo Jim. When it comes to sharing your photos and getting comments and getting people to engage in your work, do you ever feel like you're in the middle of the universe and no one is seeing your work? Well, you're in the right place. Today, we're gonna to talk about techniques for getting your engagement up. There is a science to it, and I'm here to share with you how you can get those likes and those shares and those comments. So what we'll be talking about today is strategies for marketing. But you don't have to think about marketing as just if you're trying to sell your photos or sell your photographic services. You can use these same principles, these same techniques that you see here, in order to just share your work and get more people to like and comment and thereby get more inspiration for yourself because it's always so much more fun to share your photos when people are seeing them, when people are seeing your beautiful work. So let's talk about it. This is what we really want to do is rise above the noise. We are living in a sea of information. Everybody's feeling like they're drowning in too much stuff, too many options. So what you want to do is get rid of that frustration by getting very clear on what you're offering and helping people see exactly the value so that they stop and comment and appreciate your work. And like I mentioned, this is going to result in greater inspiration for you. You're going to want to go out more and photograph more because you're sharing your work with others and they're seeing it. So it doesn't have to be quiet. It doesn't have to be a ghost town out there. You can get your engagement, you can get comments, you can get likes, you can make your marketing pop just as much as your photos. So that's what we're doing here today. This is video two in my free online workshop called Make Images That Pop. And in this part two, we're gonna be talking about making marketing that pops. I'm gonna share with you my favorite techniques for marketing how to get more people looking at your photos. And later in this free series, we're gonna talk about AI, how to use AI to create images, if you're so inclined, and how to use AI to make your efforts of all the other stuff, of making images in camera, editing them, and marketing much more easy and streamlined with the use of AI. But for now, let's talk about how to get more people looking at your photos and appreciating your work. We're gonna talk about getting a super strong online presence. That is so important in today's day and age. It's how people find out about you. And there are simpler ways to do it. So I'll be sharing those with you. You're gonna to wanna to respond to people when they do comment. You're gonna to wanna to have a conversation. And the ultimate of that conversation is gonna to be to do live events or put Facebook events together or do YouTube slideshow like videos together. The third item here is it's all about collaboration. We often think that we have to do it all ourselves, but that is not the case. The days of the lone wolf photographer are over and it's highly recommended to see how you can partner with people who would help and who you would be able to help as well. And then we wanna just play with like-minded friends. We wanna join communities that are supportive, like the wonderful community at betterphoto.com. When we think about doing photography, we often think that's all there is to it. I'm an image artist and I just wanna make greater images, better and better photos all the time. But the truth is words play a huge role in this. We want to do some search engine optimization. We want to make our titles stand out. We want to use AI to create descriptions that attract people and let them know that you're here. And then you're going to want to make emails that are super relevant to your audience, which requires that you know who your audience is. You're going to want to know who your ideal client is, whether they're people that are buying your photos, or you just think of your client as your audience, people who are enjoying and appreciating your photos if this is a hobby. 
you're going to want to define every little bit about that person so you can talk exactly to them in email newsletters and give them relevant content. And then last but not least, we'll be talking today about the no most important thing, and that's increasing our photographic abilities. So let's dive in. So first of all, a little bit of a recap. Um, if you haven't seen my first video, I recommend that you go back and watch that first video in these series. But as a little bit of a summary, I started my journey with Better Photo way back in 1996 when a friend showed me the World Wide Web. And it's hard to imagine, but can you imagine a time when you couldn't just go and post your own words and photos? You had to submit a proposal to an editor or a publisher and get that approved. There was a lot of hard work getting through those gatekeepers. And then this web came out, and I was so excited that I could publish on my own. So I rushed out and got HTML for Dummies, read it cover to cover, and in it, the author said, you could do your own personal website, or you could talk about something that you are really passionate about. And I loved photography. So I posted my top 10 photography tips. And as they say, the rest is history. People started emailing me. I started answering questions. Our first tagline in the beginning was honest answers for budding photographers. And it just grew and grew. We started doing an online photography contest. And four years into it, I got an email saying, would you please write a book for us? From an editor or publisher, I couldn't believe it. They were asking me. So I was very quickly on the phone and nurtured that relationship for the publishing of my first book called The Absolute Beginner's Guide to Taking Great Photos. And then that led to other books, one of which, Better Photo Basics, became a bestseller in its category. Then also I did online and offline workshops, online photography courses and on-location photography workshops. And one one-day workshop attracted a $23,000 bid at an auction for a good cause. So I was so grateful for that, and I couldn't believe it. And I'm just incredibly grateful that it all went to a very good cause. Let's talk a little bit about the subject matter that we talked about in the last video. We talked about before and after photos like this. We showed photos where you could do it one way, and sometimes the before photo would be very satisfying for you. Sometimes it's not a matter of either or, but and. Isn't that wonderful that sometimes when you're shooting before and after photos, you end up with two winners. This photo here shows a slow shutter speed in a final result, and the light of the day became the last light of the day, a nice, warm, golden light. So it ended up being what I consider a superior photo with that warmth and that cotton candy effect on the water. This is an example of that technique I was talking about, silhouetting. If you were to take this just in your camera, normally it wouldn't expose right. So you want to use exposure compensation or other techniques to darken that foreground so it becomes a nice, clean black. And that simplifies that element into pure shapes instead of forms. The number one technique that I talked about in the previous video was using aperture controls to isolate the focus. If you can't control your f-stop number, you can possibly use a portrait mode to create a very similar effect where one point in the photo is in focus instead of everything being in focus from the foreground to the background. Finally, we talked about using post-processing. So many images are improved by a few techniques. And I recommend that you find just like two or three controls that you can be very comfortable with and play with every single time you get an image that you really like. I liked the before photo here, but it became so much better when I just increased the saturation a little bit changed the exposure a little bit, and added a little bit of a vignette. And that made that photo really pop. Let's talk about this first technique of marketing. How to get your, your own images out into the world so that you're not lost in a universe of stars 
like that first image of the Milky Way galaxy, but you're allowing people to see you. You're allowing yourself to be heard above the noise. The first one is creating an online presence. This means creating a gallery and or a website of your very best work. And it's mobile friendly because far more people are looking at your work on a phone than they are on a desktop or a laptop nowadays. So you want a really cool gallery. You want something that showcases your work. You want something that has the most intuitive design and controls so that you can easily update it. And you don't want to fall into the trap of constantly tweaking your website or your gallery because there is an ego trap there. It's the same thing with business cards and brochures that talk about your business. It can very, uh, very often we can be tempted to put so much time and effort into, say, our business card. When most people, when they receive that, they're just going to take a quick glance and file it away. And that means maybe if you're lucky, they'll file it in a way that they keep. But very often they file it in revolving file cabinet of the trash can right after they glance at it because it's not really their interest. It's your interest. You're interested in who you are. They're interested in getting their problems or their needs met. Just have something that has a simple, intuitive interface that you can make these changes to your gallery and or your website. And know that you're going to want to enjoy the journey, make it fun, get a cup of hot tea or coffee, and have fun doing this because it will never end. There is a temptation for many people, myself included, to think that I'm going to have this thing done at some point. There are chapters. You get to a certain point where it's revolved or resolved to a certain sense, but then it's ongoing. You're never really done. So enjoy the journey. Once you have that online presence, you're going to want to increase your engagement. There are many ways to do this. One is simply by making sure that you respond promptly whenever anybody does comment on your work. You're going to want to engage in other forums and question and answers. You're going to want to be able to interact with the community and see it as fun. But you may really enjoy getting out into nature, for example, and making beautiful photographs. But think of this as fun too. Just like building an online presence can be satisfying if you make it fun, you can also make this engagement with other people fun. You can really enjoy and appreciate and be grateful for every comment. Um, one thing that you can do is simply put it in your line of sight. There's a great book called Atomic Habits where James Clear talks about one of the four key elements of making something habitual is that you put that item in your line of sight. So say, for example, you want to eat more apples instead of donuts. You put the donuts in the back of the pantry and you put a, a big bowl of beautiful polished apples in the center of your table. So you walk by them all the time. This increases the likelihood of you making it a habit. The same thing occurs for doing this work of engagement. Whatever you need to do, you want to have it be part of your daily life. Like maybe right after you get going, like I said before, you have your cup of coffee. Maybe right at that point, you always have your laptop right there in front of you with your gallery or website open so that you can just very quickly check it. You'll see this visual reminder and remember, oh yeah, I'm going to respond to so-and-so who commented on my phone. You can also use calendar reminders and alarms on your smartphone or your watch. I do this a lot. I rely on calendar reminders to help me make sure that I meet a deadline or that I respond in a timely manner. I highly recommend, if you're really adventurous, that you try at least your first live event on YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn. Try just setting it up once and see how it goes. Just hit the live button and go through the first initial steps and hit start streaming and just talk about your photos. If you want to be prepared, maybe put a 
your favorite gallery ahead of time and just scroll through a few of your photos and talk about how you created them. That's just one example of many ways that you could engage with an audience in a live manner. Make sure that you keep going for enough of a time. You have to have persistence and consistency so that your audience knows that you're going to be available at a certain time each week, for example. And then one thing I highly recommend is that you explore making videos. Now, I know what you're saying. I really love still photography, but I'm not talking necessarily about taking on video creation as a new art form. All I'm talking about doing is taking your favorite still photos and making a slideshow out of them and uploading that to a service like YouTube. Have your images in a moving format so people can really enjoy them on that platform as well. The next step is about working with others and not just being a lone wolf. It is so important to open up to partnering with other people that might have different strengths than you. But together, you'll be a greater force. You could partner with influencers that have a greater audience and maybe in exchange, you might have content, for example, that you could share with them. You wanna make sure that you're not thinking, I am alone, because you're not. And the more you open up, the more your growth will be accelerated. Quick little example of this is when I did Better Photo in the beginning, you'll remember I said for the first four years, I was answering questions on my own in the evenings and weekends after work. And then that book offer came in, first book. And I worked really hard on that and published that. And then I started meeting other influential photographers. And I partnered with many of them. And that made the growth exponential. So I highly recommend that you open up to working with other people and seeing how their strength might balance out your weakness and how your strength might balance out their weakness. And then have a dialogue with these people and think, how can I help them? Always be serving them to help them grow in their own efforts and their own goals. And then you'll find that you'll grow in yours as well. We also want to make sure that we challenge ourselves. We have fun with certain challenges. Like at Better Photo, we have the monthly photography contest. Have you ever entered that? If you haven't, I highly recommend it. In it, you have 10 categories that you can in enter your photos into. And in that process, you might win monthly contests and or you might get a photo of the day or a gem of the day. If you enter daily, and there are different levels of better photo, and the higher levels you get to enter more photos, and if you enter consistently and frequently, you'll obviously increase your chances of winning because that is the key with all creativity. We often think that we just make one winner, and we have to go out there and be very careful and snap the shutter at that exact right moment, but that's not the case. Volume is such a key for any success in this endeavor. And again, use your calendar and phone reminders to enter these photos and compete. Challenge yourself to go out there and make better and better photos all the time. You might even get placement in our Inspirations of the Week newsletter, A Better Photo. Or like I said before, you might win one of the coveted gold prizes first second or grand prize in the contest. And either way, it's motivating. You're in a community and this community are contestants, but I like to think of contestants and competitors as co-inspirers. We are co-inspiring each other to greater heights. So the next thing is you wanna really optimize your photographic content with better verbal content as well. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time diving into SEO, search engine optimization. But if you just start thinking, I'm going to push myself to title my image and describe my image with interesting words or interesting titles so that it serves to help people want to really enjoy your photo. You could in your description say, hey, 
I'm going to do a caption contest. And in the comments below, tell me what do you think would be a good caption for this photo if you want to intrigue people. You could use really juicy words that just describe it. Instead of saying dog or cat or deer in the title, you could say my furry friend. Just as a small example, you could say a visitor in the woods while I was photographing the beautiful pine trees. That's a much more interesting title than just say deer. I encourage you to think about how you can do this. And if English is your second language, or if you have a belief about not being able to be so good with words, check out ChatGPT and just start asking ChatGPT, give me 10 possible titles for this photo. And you can even, if you're using the ChatGPT that is the paid version, you can even enter your photo and tell it to title and describe it for you and see what it comes up with. Often the answers will be a little off or a little wrong, but often you'll either find a perfect answer or it will get you thinking about the problem in a different way and, and that will unlock an idea for yourself. You want to be very good with all of these ideas. You also want to add stories to your descriptions as much as possible. People really are engaged when they hear a story, even if it's a very short story, a little vignette, so that they can feel engaged as well. I mentioned before not falling into a trap of spending way too much time in search engine optimization. However, it is a good idea to just peek, to just take a little look here and there to see what are the words that people are using when they're searching. And you can go to a site like Google Trends to see what trends are happening. You can maybe use that with your photo. I recommend also encouraging people to share your work. Just invite them to share it. Don't make it seem like you're desperate. Maybe make it fun. Make it a little wink kind of joke. Hey, you know, could you share this with a hundred of your friends today? And just see how it goes. <clears throat> Email has been a key of my success. And I highly recommend that if you're not already, start collecting email addresses by asking people, hey, would you like to hear from me in the future? Or something similar. You could go as far as creating a opt-in lead magnet where you have a special lead page that people enter their email address to say, hey, I'm interested. It's like they're raising their hand saying, I'm interested. And as a reward for that, you give them what's called a lead magnet, a pre-done content piece, say your top 10 photography tips or your favorite three national parks, or anything that you think your photography audience would enjoy. And again, that goes back to getting a sense of who is it that is really liking my work? And do this on a regular basis. Again, put it in your calendar and or your phone and do it like once a week. Post something to your audience that is very relevant to them and listen to their feedback so you can continually make it more and more relevant. You want to have a place where you can put all those email addresses. A lot of people use MailChimp. I use Drip. There's a ton of different uh, resources where you can store email addresses and, and then email out a little newsletter to them. Often people are very concerned about, am I emailing too many words to them? Is it too long of an email? Is it too much? Is it too frequent? And that is never the question. The question is always, is it relevant? If it is really important to your audience, they won't ever complain about it being too much. And if anybody does complain and you know that overall you're providing good, relevant information to your audience, that just means that that person is not your relevant audience. They're, they're not someone who appreciates your relevant content. The most important thing, by far the biggest. Can I have a drum roll, please? It's very simple. In order to get more marketing pop, you want to become even better at photographic technique and photo editing. It all comes back to that simple truth. You are already doing a fantastic job. Is there room for improvement? Always. There's always room for improvement. There's always the next level. So you want to combine these techniques and 
Use all that you can to enhance your skills. Take an online photography class at Better Photo, for example. Improve by posting your photos and asking for feedback. Keep your editing getting better and better as well. Whatever tool you use, and if you don't use a tool, try checking out, say, Canva.com. It's a very simple tool right now. There are many to choose from. The two most common are Photoshop and Lightroom. However, they both have a monthly subscription. That is a little steep. It's hard to make ends meet if you get all of the Adobe products. Now, they do have a photographer's package only, which when I signed up for it was $10 a month for Photoshop and Lightroom. Whatever you do, find a way to enhance your images and make them pop so that you're creating images that are just so interesting. Sometimes you might want to make images that are funny or they're amusing. Sometimes you might want to make images that are using the golden light of the landscape. And then you might want to take that photo into an editing program and make that golden light even warmer, even shine even more. So grow in a supportive community. Make sure that community where you find like-minded friends is supportive because why waste any time in an environment where people are, there's a lot of ego or you need to have a certain kind of equipment in order to be a real photographer, a bunch of baloney like that. Take courses, get feedback, compete, challenge yourself, make it so much fun that you end up having a great time and you're just filled with positive thoughts like, I'm so blessed, I'm so grateful, I can't believe I have so much good here because I'm doing these things right. All right, so let's have some more fun. Let's have a quick lightning round of techniques of how you can improve your capture and your editing. First one is lighting. I just mentioned that golden hour where it's right before the sunset or right after the sunrise, and it's just this golden, beautiful, warm light. You can also photograph during the sunset, of course, and after the sunset. Any of these beginning of the day and end of the day times are excellent opportunities for making stunning photos. The next thing you're going to want to do is remember some of the key things about composition. If you are not aware of the rule of thirds, definitely become aware of it. It's in my top 10 photography tips. You're going to want to use that and use leading lines in your photo to guide the viewer's eye into something that is a nice payoff. And then... All photography, as Susan Sontag said, is framing, and all framing is elimination. And you can use a certain technique in composition where you look for something in your scene to frame your subject. It might be tree branches. It might be an open window of an old barn. Whatever it is, see if there's something in your scene that you can utilize to frame your subject. Look for bold colors if you want to make images that pop. If you happen to be out photographing in the middle of the day, look for bold colors. This is my number one tip that I started way back in 1996. While photographing, using your camera, you can move up closer to your subject. After photographing, you can use your editing software to crop very tightly in order to make a composition that really pops. Look also for unique perspectives. Get down very low and shoot up at your subject or get up high and shoot down on your subject. Do whatever it takes to find that unique perspective. And then be sure you get rid of every single thing that is not serving your photo or your subject. Remember, it often comes back to better editing as well. And you're going to want to find that one system that works for you. Keep it very simple. Just find two or three controls that you can focus on at this time and become a master of them. And then remember that you're gonna to wanna to be very subtle with it. I like to go until I see the effect and then back off a little bit. A better photo member brought to my attention that it's also really important to do it with sharpening. It's so often a problem where a photographer over sharpens the image and it doesn't look great. If you look closely at this photo, in Colorado. It doesn't look too bad. I'm going to show you two more versions where I've sharpened it too much. 
So right there, if you look very closely, you'll start to see that it's different. But then here, it's really extreme. Do you see how those edges look so unnatural? The clouds even look unnatural now. That is too sharpened. So if you're ever sharpening your images, just do it a little bit until you see it and then back off. And if you're not sure about it, err on the side of very little sharpening. Just do a, a minor touch. And here's some extra bonus points. If you really want to get to the next level in your marketing, first, you're going to want to really get to know who is looking at your photos. Is it other photography enthusiasts? Are they people who just really enjoy and appreciate art? Is your audience portrait clients or wedding clients? Really go deep on what are their needs and wants? What is driving them? What are they looking for? What frustrates them? What interests them? And write it all down. Write down this very detailed description of who you are trying to appeal to. So then you can cater everything that you write and every photo that you post to be something that serves them. And give generously. Be a cheerful giver. Whether it's uh, adding a response to a comment or uploading another photo, or putting another blog post, be prepared to just be constantly contributing to the conversation. And do this both at the sites that you really like to frequent, but then also branch out and look for things like forums where your audience may already be conversing. And if you want to get extra bonus points, consider creating a free or low cost ebook of either just your photos or your photos with words that will be interesting and relevant to your audience. And then you can also look at sending personal, handwritten, physical thank you cards. This is especially helpful if you're creating portraits for clients or doing weddings, any kind of service photography, and you really want to go the extra mile and give them that nice extra gift. It's time. You can leave hope marketing behind. You know, that kind of feeling like, I hope they come look at my photos. I hope someone likes my photo. I hope someone shares and I hope someone comments. Leave that behind and see it as a system, a very detailed structure that you can follow and win. In the next video, I'm going to share with you the best uses for AI, the current state of the art uses for AI, and I'm going to share with you the one thing that I've really benefited out the most. And if you see this photo here, there's a little quiz for you. Do you know what movie that image is from? AI is a fantastic tool to play with, either, either for creating images just for fun or for using your descriptions and titles or for making your titles, descriptions, blogs, emails so much easier to produce. In the comments below, do me a favor and tell me a little bit about yourself. If we were to get together, What's one question that you would love to ask? Comment below and put in the one question that you would ask if we got together for a cup of hot chocolate tea or the beverage of your choice. Thank you for joining me today. Make images that pop part two. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, have fun making fantastic photos.